set up differently because I use this like audio program. Oh, okay. Hmm. You are quiet to me. Uh, hello? Okay. Yeah, it sounds better? louder. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, that's going to be the whole recording. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good to go. Just audio. I just audio do audio tests and stuff. So, <laughs> well, that was fun. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> yeah, how were you? Did uh, is it was that is the game over? Oh, yeah. He, <laughs> I just watched it in bed anyway. I would just worry about. I didn't. If he was gonna watch it on the TV, I was worried about the, the sound. Sometimes it gets loud, but or just the internet quality too. So I was worried about. If, so like I, sh I shut off all of the other Wi-Fi devices when I stream. So. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you were like sneaking away because he forbids you to stream and you have to wait for <laughs> him to sleep. No, but then it's also easier too if he's that way because we're hanging out and like we're cleaning and stuff today too. So then I'm like, I don't want to be rude and because um, we only have so much time. So it's easier and like, oh, I can do things when he's asleep anyway. But he went to bed pretty He wakes up super, super early. So he usually goes to bed sometimes before nine. <laughs> oh. But yeah, so then ugh, I just had a work thing though too. I'm like, I don't work on Sundays, but then it's taking over the roles now that they eliminated the managing editor position, um, oh. and, and, uh, you know, abruptly. So it's just sort of like trying to fill in and figure out different things. And, and so I had to do something today, too. So that just put me even more behind. So, <laughs> so, so with my whole day and everything, <laughs> Luna needed to go for a hike. And then I was also trying to clean oh. up stuff in the house. And yeah, and then I had to upload some stuff for work. Football. <laughs> Can't get away from football, high school football, NFL. <laughs> uh, is he is he watching the Bills? I don't I don't know. It's all, uh, they, were, they had a seventies orange creamsicle, was what the out the out uniforms were. Uh, um and because uh, he when he pointed them out, he said that they're called orange creamsicle, and I said that look that looks very seventies, and he because it was like the ugly orange color of the seventies, uh, and he said, yeah, that's what they call it, seventies. Like, yeah, it has to be. No, I mean, I have curtains that are that color actually right here because I think they were from the seventies that were my grandparents, and my dad had it, and then I took them. So, and they're uh, it's an ugly orange. <laughs> yeah. I t I watch old. I always wonder if any if any uh, football or sports fans are like, yeah, I, I go back and watch like a games from 1977 <laughs> or something. No, I mean, <laughs> he. I know I don't think maybe clips or something. I don't care about sports enough to do that. I don't like watching today's sports on TV. It's more interesting if it's live. Like if you go there in person to see something, that's a little bit yeah. more interesting just because you have the atmosphere. But other than that, I'd rather, for a lot of sports, I'd rather play. I mean, and I don't really like to be that active anyway, but like it's more fun to be involved than it is to just watch. This the way I feel about like video games too. Like I don't watch people play games. I'd rather play on myself. The only one that I've watched is like Alex because then, you know, when she's live and then you can talk to her. So I like the idea of oh, yeah. having a connection to the, the person streaming. Um, like that's more interesting to me, but the top of the list is to play yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've only really, I mean, I've only watched those if I'm stuck in a game and then I just watch the part I'm stuck in. <laughs> yeah. There are certain things that I'm like, just to know, how, like, I don't want to play this game, but I do want to know what happens in it is like specifically that might be for like anime or Japanese based games, because there's the show, um, this anime Danganronpa, a horror anime. So it has yeah. season one and then sees it. It's got, then there's the next seasons called Don Gun Rumpa 3. It's based off of the third game or fourth, whatever it is. But there's like other games in between. But you need to know that information to like that context to understand. And it's two, 
two different seasons in Danganronpa 3 that you watch back and forth. There's two different arcs, and the one is was it the hope arc and the despair arc. Um, so one's like the present or the future from season one, and one goes into the past. So you like alternate watching both of them to like understand the whole thing. But to understand that, you need to know what happened in the video games. So I'm like, I'm not going to play through these games right now. I'm just going to watch yeah. like a half hour recap of someone like telling me it on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I mean, I'll, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of games like now have all the cutscenes. It's basically a movie, and then like sometimes I'll put all the cutscenes in one video. It's basically longer than a movie. So, mm -hmm. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, I should replay this old game, and then I'm like, well, I could just watch. <laughs> I could just go to the parts I forget or something. Um, I don't play enough game, especially story based games these days to do it although my friend just gifted me what's it called phas phasm i was trying to tell alex this on the stream the other night phasm phas phasm phantasmor phantasmor yeah yeah maybe is that a <laughs> i think that's a game or something phasmobia i think oh uh no phasmophobia Phas oh. phasmophobia that that's it so right. afraid of some ghosts or something i guess so yeah it's an indie survival horror game so my friend gifted it to me and i still haven't played it yet but he said it's fun to play in groups so I'm in, i need to commit time to oh yeah <laughs> to trying it out yeah i'm playing a game called transphobia <laughs> <laughs> the video game that. yeah <laughs> You run away from, you're in New York and you just go into Brooklyn and it's terrifying. <laughs> but, uh, oh yeah, you said you were going to Chicago or you mm -hmm. do sometimes because you have still have friends there. Yeah, um, I mean, I, what was it in August? That was the first time I had been back since. Oh, it was like two and a half years. When did we move? Though I don't even remember when I did I move go back there after we moved. I can't remember. It was like tw early 2021, the last time that I'd been back. Um, so that was the first time we went back there. But the Ginger has a football game the, that weekend. So the Raiders are playing there and that's his team. So oh. he wanted to go to that. And then I said, yeah, like I want to go to because to visit friends. And so we're going to try and meet up with a D&D &D group again. I don't think we can all meet at the same time, though. But then I have a Savage Worlds group that I don't run. My fr one friend who's in my D and D group, he runs it. So we're meeting up in person there because I haven't seen them since I, bef since before COVID stuff too. When they when that went virtual. Oh, are they? Are any of them the the woke uh, D and D people? Oh yeah, I mean they all uh, to some extent are. I would say. You know, of that they're not they're not of the like our crowd of you because they, so they don't follow they follow more mainstream stuff of things. But but my one friend, I won't out him on there, but he well, I've kind of said it in the chat too. Like the one guy, he started watching some of the streams too because he found <laughs> he found it because I mentioned it when we were out there, and I just said like, oh yeah, I stream, but I didn't say where. Like I um I just kind of mentioned it to them. And I didn't expect him to go out of his way to find it. And I forgot that my Rumble channel was listed on my YouTube channel. And so he, so I, I think I gave my YouTube name, but I'm like, oh yeah, but I don't stream on there. And I think he went to it to find it on Rumble. And I'm like, wow, what? <laughs> so I was scared. And I told him afterward too, because uh, I was like, I thought you're going to end up hating me when you watch the Friday streams though. And he's like, I don't hate you. I just don't know how much of it I can watch. I'm like, you don't have to, like, don't feel, I'm like, if you're going to watch Thursdays might be better because that's the pop culture one. So we talk less about that, but he did join in um, the past Friday though too. And what he said, it was, it was a good time though. So, but I was trying to be a little bit careful <laughs> when I saw him, like, I won't go too hard <laughs> on everything right now. Um, but yeah, yeah, so they're they're all great people. It's but I we just never really got 
political. And that's what he said too. He was like, um, he was just surprised that because we've been playing for like five years though. And he's like, you know, none of the politics and stuff has come up in like D and D at all. So he was impressed by that. I'm like, I, yeah, it doesn't have to. <laughs> like, I mean, my own the kingdom outside of it being run by like evil people right now that aren't supposed to is run how I ideally see any land being in that a very like here's the leader which is a king in this case um just protecting the kingdom and letting the people huh he is actually well he's he's never been seen on it he's the like he's the real king but like so there's been evil people who are pretending and and it's a complex five years of a game so it's complicated but it's just that it's a very like minarchist society where like yeah you have a leader who's there to protect the people but he's pretty laissez-faire about everything. So, um, and my group, they've been doing a lot of entrepreneurial stuff of like starting a lot of businesses <laughs> while they're there. So, like, yeah, all right. Oh, uh, but do they, didn't they, was D&D the one that they, the new system is like woke or something? Um, they're, yeah, they've updated a l- different things. I don't know. I don't really pay attention to that. Modern I, I times. hear. I hear people. I hear. I forget what they do. They took out, I think, a, a, a race. Some some racial stuff too, because like each race would get certain attributes. I think they were trying to like get rid of that, maybe to make it more even or something. I don't know. It ultimately didn't matter though, because uh, it's the DM's discretion how you do it. Like if you want, like you can make it that your race, whatever you are. Like I don't want to be good or even as the individual of that race though like instead of being like you get extra strength or extra charisma or something like that and if you're like hey can and just talk to your dm and say like if my character is blah 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 like can i have this instead like it's just up to like how you guys want to play that game um so i just didn't really care about the changes that they made because i'm like yeah like you it should always have been up to like how you guys want to do it anyway um if you want to make it where it's set like and and i think they took we're taking out alignments too and people were really upset by that but i already don't play with set alignments because my thing of individualism is if you're um if you have enough uh intelligence to be able to decide you know like to have like thought and, and and especially language you can decide whether or not you're going to be good or evil and this is a lot of it's for monsters and stuff because people would get upset by like goblins are always evil orcs are always evil and that's set like if that's your lore like some people like that is the universe that they're in that they have like that's totally fine and mine i got rid of all that like that wasn't what they were they're just creatures and they have each of their individual intelligences and um and they can do like the ginger actually plays a goblin and he's but he's like a warlock bard uh producer entertainer who had a very jewish accent for a while but he eventually dropped that because he got tired of it but and he's green which like goblins aren't supposed to be green but he says that he's green and furry so like all right whatever (laughs) like you can just do what you want as you you're playing pretend around a table in theory if you're playing physically but together um so i just don't super care about like the changes that they've made because i was already ignoring a lot of the rules anyway yeah especially if you're the master which is a problematic word it is yeah (laughs) um i don't know what they'd call the dungeon owner dungeon they just call me god though so (laughs) that's less problematic to just be god I mean, you could do a have a war in the and have one side be Israel and one Palestine. If you want to make it realistic, yeah, mine is set in my own kingdom, my own like potentially my own realm. So, um, yeah, like that none of real current day Earth exists. Do you think? Uh, so you said like. Uh, guns aren't allowed obviously in chicago um well i don't have the uh, concealed carry permit for illinois i only have it for pennsylvania and and illinois doesn't recognize pennsylvania's permit so it's a very <laughs> like pa it seems like all the surrounding uh states i think maybe ohio recognizes it but like uh, new york and stuff they don't recognize it which i needed remember to take my gun from under the car seat still i mentioned that on the stream the other day and i still keep forgetting every time i go to the car i'm like remember to grab this when you leave and i don't (laughs) yeah well 
that's also like, what are the odds that someone will see that? It's a s- secret spot unless you have a cop search your vehicle. Yeah, that's the concern is that it's only like if you get pulled over by chance for something and then they might ask, like, do you have any weapons? Here? And so then you say yes, but then you're not supposed to have them. So or you yeah. say no and you don't remember that they're there and then get in trouble for that, too. So that you don't want to. I just picture that being a spot where like someone is like holding you hostage and then you like in an action movie you just are like oh i forgot to have that gun right there and then you like flip it <laughs> yeah do a somersault and grab it and then no it'd be very helpful to have in case of an emergency like if any sort of real emergency but unfortunately the government doesn't want you to be able to protect yeah. yourself in case of emergency without you living there i guess because i don't i'm in the wrong state for that i don't know if they accept anyone's I don't know if they reciprocate any other states. Probably. I don't know why they don't accept Pennsylvania's. Yeah, I never actually thought about that. State Across state lines. I guess mm. I would have thought every state doesn't recognize any other state. Mm-mm. No, there are, are a good amount. I feel like PA is recognized by like 20 some other ones. Mm. But um, but I, I would imagine the reason why they don't is because of the different rules that it takes. Like the, uh, the different, um, what's it called? The steps that it takes to get the license like some places they, they require like 40 hours of training that you have to go somewhere and, and you know practice shooting that pa doesn't do that i went into the sheriff's uh, office and then the secretary or whatever i asked uh, my the ginger sister-in-law and i went um well she had to mail it in because she's in a different county but she went with me and so i just asked like can i get this permit and they said sure they did a quick background check and then he she said that the sheriff um does it the way he does it is just gives people the permits first and then if you end up like doing something wrong then they'll revoke it later on but they just give you like if you pass the background check he doesn't see why you shouldn't be allowed to have the permit so there was absolutely no like training that we needed to do because you don't need one for like hunting and stuff so like um people have that and you can start hunting at like 12 years old yeah i guess uh yeah, I guess like, you know, all, all the uh, shootings made me, I am, I was like, well, me, I don't know, they should have a background check. But I mean, what does that even, I mean, I feel like, the, I always think in the future, like, they'll eventually be able to like, when you're born, just somehow scan and know if you're mentally ill or something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's always a risk of, yeah. of that type of thing. And the background check is really just to see like, are you legally allowed to have, because like if you have a warrant out for your arrest or your, you know, an ex convict, depending on, I forget what is, um, certain people, like they can't have, they can't, also can't own guns, which I think is wrong too. Like if you're back out in society, you paid your time and you're a free person though, like I don't understand why you wouldn't be allowed to, unless you were potentially like it was a violent crime. I can understand that. But I have a friend who went to prison for, I think it was just a year and it was for like embezzlement or something. I don't know, something money, it was something money wise. Yeah. Um, he is black, so, you know, uh-huh. but, um, but no, it was something like he made a lot of money, but then he did something that he shouldn't have done. And so then he went to prison for a bit and he, then he said he's not allowed to own a gun anymore. Um, yeah. But I think too, like it had nothing to do with the violent, it wasn't a violent crime and he's, he did his time and he's free now. So I don't understand why he should, he wouldn't be allowed to have that. I think that's stupid. I mean, uh, black people should be allowed to exist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know what? That was very brave and s- what's the other word? They stunning, stunning and brave of you to say that because no one else would ever say that out loud. No. Well, do you feel like Chicago is dangerous? Because everyone, I mean, I, from what I hear, I'm, I picture it worse than New York, but. I haven't compared like statistics or anything. I I don't know if it's worse than New York. It's New York is more people, more yeah. crowd and more condensed too in the amount of space that there is. So like I don't know, but it's what like eight million people in New York to like three million in Chicago too, and the smaller uh, physical area. So it's just very dense there. Uh, so and I don't know anything about the crime. Oh, let's say it can be very dangerous. Like there are plenty of 
places too, like where like shootings and stuff happen. That's why they say the South side can be, yeah. but uh, I knew a lot of people who were like, no, I love the South side and they might go down there. But so it's really, and other people have talked about too, that it's neighborhood to neighborhood. Like you just have to, oh, like yeah. there are places in the North side that can also be very dangerous, like uptown. Um, but even with that, like you can have nice areas and then it's block by block. We're like oh, this yeah. block area is still sketchy, even though the rest of it is fine. So I mean, I think just like with any big city, you always want to be careful. But I I usually hung out in the lesser crime and either more touristy or more residential and, and lesser crime kind of areas. Um, yeah. So, I mean, knock on wood, I haven't uh, specifically experienced stuff there myself, but I have had like a coworker get mugged at gunpoint twice in his neighborhood where he lived. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's like here too. Well, a lot of, I mean, I like us a lot of cities, but here, like, I'm in a part of Brooklyn that's really hipstery. Um, mm -hmm. But it doesn't seem that bad. But then just a few blocks away, that guy got stabbed, like, recently. Um, Ryan or whatever. Oh, was that the guy? Oh, right. Okay. The Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I like, I talked about him on my podcast and I read, I was like, oh, that sucks, you know. But then like, as soon as I <laughs> saw a picture of him, I was like, oh, <laughs> like it sucks. He looks like that because <laughs> he just looks like, I'm like, okay, I know why he went up to the guy. <laughs> you just picture this guy going up like, hey man. You don't have to do this like it would turn his life <laughs> the get criminal oh, oh yeah yeah know? yeah what was the situation again it was it was a mugger or i don't remember what the uh, anything was well i guess he was waiting for the bus like i guess this is the, the camera at like 4 a.m and the stabber guy was like just across the street or something kicking over scooters or something and then I didn't, I actually didn't watch the video, but they said, uh, everybody was like, oh, he walked, he got the guy's attention, like, out of no, nowhere, and then it was, like, getting his attention, and then the guy flipped out at him. Who got the, the Ryan guy got yeah. the other, the guy's attention, and then it angered him, and then he came over, and... Yeah, like, well, I read, oh, he's a so social justice advocate, and he has... People said a lot of people were like, "Oh, I know this guy is my friend. He did such great work for the." So he he's like a mm -hmm. work activist, right? I remember that part there. But and then he said something. Oh, I think it was like maybe it might have been a Twitter squad or something too that we went over. But um, so about like crime isn't that bad here was essentially what he was like trying to. Uh, oh no, that was say a different one. <laughs> oh, see, I can't Two keep of track of them all. The same. Oh yeah, see, because like, there's a lot of crime happening yeah. in cities though that you just should admit that this is happening and like always be like yeah like you don't go call like especially someone who's like being violent towards other things though like no you, then you you don't try to to save them and change their heart you stay away and grab your gun if you can have one well then prepare you're to grab making one. an assumption because they're brown yeah well, well the thing is like I mean, well, people were like, oh, one time he talked someone out of mugging him or something. And I'm like, well, that's cool that it worked a one time. But like oh, there's certain people here where you can tell like, OK, don't engage because, <laughs> you know, like this yes. guy was, you know, flipping out. And Situational. Yeah. He wasn't already trying to mug him like that. Yeah. When someone's already initiating violence in some way, like you're less likely to be able to talk them down. I just think that was a poor choice generally. Um, and clearly. Yeah. I mean, well, he probably had been drinking. They said they were at a wedding, but I mean, mm. also like they were like, oh, because it, it was on. Martin Luther King Boulevard, which is like, I mean, oh. I guess it's true. Every single one in every city is dangerous. Like every single the, Martin Luther King Boulevard yeah, is. There's a few oh, really? people say that that street specifically in every city is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've heard that before. I forgot about it though. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I've lived near, or I've known, like I've seen a few, and I'm like, yeah, I guess that's true because, because like even at that bus stop, it doesn't even look that bad, but then it becomes a little sketchy. That's the area where it be starts to become a little weird, but hmm. um, yeah, I guess that's well. That's another like I was thinking how you you guys know on your podcast about the you know there there's people that are cluster b like probably this stabber guy was one of those people you know i mean i have no idea without any information on that just say like he's clearly psychologically troubled in some way that he's violent <laughs> and so i mean yeah. some amount of insane to just go up to someone and stab them yeah i mean because i but then i saw comments like oh i think i heard this guy I was around that area and I heard someone say, I'm going to stab somebody soon. Just anyone. <laughs> At least he's a, he's a man true to his word. <laughs> yeah. Like, but it's a, but that's the thing. Like I just can't get over that people, I know he's like an activist or whatever. Like, I guess he doesn't want to, he's like, I'm going to give this guy a chance. Like I'm going to try to reason or I'm going to, but like, I just, I'm always surprised like shocked about how people don't think I, I just kind of I assume he doesn't think that there's certain people that are just you know bad you know like yeah I mean well first did he survive or did he no. die okay um and then I, I guess I think of it in like any sort of fictional media like a movie or something I always hate it when here's the bad guy who's done so many terrible things like or maybe i've seen it more in like anime and stuff too where like you know like they've killed people and whatever like as they're the oh. big bad and but then the main hero the main character he's trying to say like you know like hey let me talk to you i just want to try and, and say like you don't have to do this you can stop I'm like at that point you don't have i mean you know i guess you can say that that is that is a taking the higher road and you're being a big bigger man of trying to do that but morally i don't feel that you're obligated if someone has already been like a, a, attacking and especially a murdering people that like no you can just take them out and there's no part like you do not need to save them and help make them a better person at all i think even in the in avatar the last airbender it wasn't uh, like the fire lord um i can't remember his name right now o ozai <laughs> he uh um, I think like, he probably killed people. I need to rewatch that show because I can't remember all the details now. But um, and even Aang though, like he he just takes his power away and then like so then he's arrested and stuff too. But and because Aang oh. didn't want he was you know too uh, too not uh, pacifist I guess in that way. But I'm like no, I would have been totally fine to like beat him up to even kill him but to like beat him up and at least but like subduing him you take his power away like that is the second best thing that you could do though if you're not going to kill him is to just take away any ability for him to do damage anymore yeah well doesn't kind of de uh, demon slayer kind of does that where it shows the backstory like the sympathetic backstory of <clears throat> the bad guys um i'm trying to remember the backstories of bad guys in you know, there. You know, where, like, they're, like, uh, well, you know, the one guy, the one bad guy, I, I have, I think you've watched more of it than me, but the... I haven't seen the newest season, so I've seen, uh, seen this first two, but I can't well, remember who the bad guys fights, are. <laughs> is, doesn't everyone he fight, like, it goes... Oh, yeah, 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 because yeah. then, like, the guy, like, who had the papers and stuff, too, and um, he, he had a story and everyone, and, like, no one cared about his his writing, and then, and people, um, oh, yeah. I, I forget, it was, like, the demon in the house, and so then, and um, Tanjiro ended up killing him, stopping him, but he was, like, uh, careful to avoid stepping on the paperwork, and that made the demon, like, feel, like, more okay with it. So, he, yeah, oh. you're right. That is a total... Yeah. I just couldn't remember. It's been a while since I've watched it. But, yeah, each one kind of had, like, man, this is so tragic. I feel so sorry for them. Like, their human yeah. lives were so unfortunate. And then they're a demon here. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's... Yeah, that was sad. Um, yeah. Yeah, and... and uh yeah, I mean, I do. I think of most woke people as like super villains. <laughs> like they, they act the way those guys do, or like Joker and Batman and Poison Ivy and Batman, because they're like, 
oh, like, you know, Poison Ivy was like, I'm an activist, but I'm killing people. Like, <laughs> they're taking out everything on, like, they want revenge, basically, for old racism. So now they're basically being racist to get back at, you know. Um, y yeah. I'm trying to think how I describe I mean, it depends on the people. Like, if you're the more activist type, you're always going to be more obnoxious. I don't care what side you're on, though. But anyone who's, yeah. like, more of an activist is probably... Because it's the thing where I just, like, no, just leave people alone. Stop. Like, I get... There are certain things that I think is fine to be an activist for, though. But it's just kind of, like, I don't like hearing it. But I'd say, like, you know, ones that are trying to talk about, like, child trafficking, human... Tra like, other sex trafficking like whatever things like that um like those things i think it could always be fine to try to like get more people to to yeah. learn about and try to stop um because i think that one it's a lot easier to like agree with than it is to just try and say the world's gonna end because climate change and all of your carbon carbon footprint and blah 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 it's gonna end in I don't know, 12 years or whatever they say now um yeah i guess like yeah, no, there's only a few things that I almost am, am an activist about, like free speech and, uh, um, yeah, child trafficking. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's what like there's that. certain things that I do agree with, but it's yeah. just sometimes, but I'm also just like, I don't really want to hear people talk about a lot of it though, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it's also like the, um, some comedian this one comedian talked about too like <laughs> bonnie mcfarlane she was like uh i just hate like everyone standing around agreeing is annoying or something like <laughs> at, like a group of people that are all like i don't know chanting i'm just like oh you know like <laughs> oh yeah yeah unless it's like funny chanting like fun <laughs> Something yeah. that you're just kind of being silly with any, I mean, like, but I feel that way with like religious things or like even like when pledging, I have all the meetings that I go to for work and stuff too. So many of them start with saying the Pledge of Allegiance and I'm like, but it also, it's so chanty sounding that it's, that it always makes me feel weird too. Um, but yeah, so like uh, on either way, like of chanting for like the activist things or any like any form of chanting, it either is going to sound like a cultist or or it has it should be fun that you're you know just chanting boobs over and over like all right you know I'm gonna get behind that. Yeah, like I I just went to this uh like live debate that was like well yeah it was like a it's called it's like from this thing called Braver Angels where they try to get the right and left people to talk to each other mm. and it was like at a at the comedy cellar actually and it was like uh i was like really like this um it was really refreshing to see people be like talking about the right like republican people speaking <laughs> uh and i thought it was really cool and then i was like oh maybe i'll join this but i was like uh I mean, I might join, but then I'll probably just be like, all right, this is cool, but I'm not going to uh, be an activist, probably. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, the, the longer that all this goes on, the less I care about the Republicans and, and Democrats and all that, too, though, because I'm like, oh, they're, they're problematic on both sides, uh, on all sides. Yeah. So I just I really do, I, I don't like um, parties and I don't like even and I try to s not even use the left. Sometimes I get that it's just easier, though, too. But I really if I am trying to be particular, then I try to just say like the authoritarians or oh, yeah. the collectivists and stuff, because I find that to be more specific because the left is too bright. Because there are some people who do think they're on the left, but they're like, you know, old school Democrats and that they yeah. don't agree. So um, it's too yeah. unclear. I've always like not really picked a party because I was like, I'm just common sense. Like, and that's not a, like, I wish that was a political party's common sense and like because, like, even after this debate, it was, like, kind of, uh, it was kind of, it was, like, arguing f if the patriarchy was smashed. <laughs> and, um, 
it was funny because basically by the end I was like, all right, so like, yeah, it's basically what I thought. Like, some in some places, like, um, only men shouldn't be in charge all the time. But in other places, like, it was like, yeah, common sense wins again. Like, <laughs> I mean, there was no. Yeah. Uh, it's just like dumb to have um, a two part. I don't know. This whole one way or the opposite is kind of like never. How often, like, no one even lives like that. No one's like, well, I'm this way all the time. Like, I'm only this way. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess there are people who really like to try to see things in black and white because no one really likes to. I mean, that's how you kind of see with the activists and the woke people and all that, where they like, this is wrong and everything is terrible because no one likes to see nuance. So it's just easier for people who don't want to think to to say that like here's the good guys here's the bad guys and then anyone who's not agreeing with me is the bad guy yeah. um it's easier if they don't have to use their brains yeah i guess like well then i realized like the people that work for this or not work but like organize debates or whatever like they seem like okay i could see them running for office like there's something <laughs> annoying about those people too even though i like oh good we're gonna talk like uh, you know, pro abortion person, and then, you know, um, but then you realize like everybody's like, oh, I think I misunderstood you in this part, or they bring up stuff that's not related to the patriarchy, like, well, men can be bad or whatever. And I'm like, wait, it's that's <laughs> that's not the patriarchy idea of that because, and then everyone realized also that they all defined it differently too, like. Yeah, that's where I like to start off yeah. with most things, though. Because communication is the biggest, that's the most important thing for people to have relationships with one another. And it's the hardest thing. And especially, you know, it's hard enough doing it with people who already speak the same language as you as a first language. And then you're trying to bring it in globally with people from a, so like, I, I think that is more challenging, but I find it challenging. Like, I, uh, to communicate like you you, you have um people in relationships and stuff too though i think that can like you see so many of them that like oh like well, here's this problem and it could be fixed if we could just like communicate things better but then and it's not even just about speaking it's just about taking that information in too because it's like oh i'm going to be defensive when i hear about this thing that i don't like that i that i feel guilty about it or or i know that i'm wrong about this but i'm not good at admitting it so then i'm going to just kind of lash out and stuff that, that everyone can do that type of behavior to an extent at different times and then and um, so just learning how to communicate in that way. So I'm, and I'm using that like broadly of just like how to give and take in information um, is important. And starting off with like defining the terms. And I, that's why I'm like, I'm OK. I mean, I wish we could solidify what term what words mean by things. But yeah. I get that like there's so many definitions for it. So that's at least if we're going to start off like tell me what you mean by this and then we can go from there that way we're not talking past each other because we're going to be just talking about two different concepts but using the same word yeah i mean i don't know it's almost like should there only be one <laughs> definition for each word i mean ideally that would yeah. be nice but that's never going to happen because you have words that's that why, are nouns or verbs yeah. That's why all the woke stuff is like just, uh, you know, like this guy Scribe Light on YouTube. Um, he's great because he, he basically goes over t bad TED Talks and then also just DEI stuff. And it's like they have to, they're, it's all like word salad because it's like there's, they don't define anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or like, um, you know, and then some stuff like, um, this one comedian Kurt Metzger on his podcast he had actually he had when he had Ethan from Comics Gate on they were like Ethan Van Skyver yeah they were like um, they talked about what being queer means and they're like oh, all right let's look it up and then they <laughs> they looked up and it was like so it had no definition basically they were like okay oh, yeah, I'm not they use it for like everything yeah they're like I'm now more confused <laughs> after mm -hmm. looking up yeah. 
And and then like you go on the sites and they're like, well, what does it mean to you? And then it has like ten different queer people giving their take on what it means. <laughs> well, I mean, that even happened in the main Discord server too, because I, I forget you had asked something, and then I was trying to give like I forget what the like how do, how do you define anarchist i think it was anarchist oh yeah so then um so then i was trying to explain that because like i get like i know that people see it as just like the crazy um just no no order at all it's just total chaos but and i get that like yeah some people think that way but the other one you're kind of talking about it in regard to like a or government or lack thereof it just it means more um that you're not having like the full-on federal government or whatever, whatever amount like there isn't the, and it's more privatized as more privately owned places so like it's not that there can't be leaders or can't be owned, like any structure but it's just not done through like here's this government that's doing it um but then and there was someone in chat like in, in there too who was kind of saying that no like here like the definition is just disorder and chaos and then i know alex and I forget someone else. I think they were chiming in, and and maybe it was Johnny Boy who like trying to say like no, like this is how. So they were kind of on different sides, and yeah. and it was hard. Like, it, and it seemed like it was getting a little bit tense. So then I was, and I'm because I'm a mediator too. So then I was trying to like, well, here, like I can understand this thing, I can understand that, and then ultimately when I was saying like, let's forget trying to like define what this is, and I just try to get down to here's what I believe. Like this is how I think something should be handled. And by the end of it, the other one on there, he was he was had kind of you know they were kind of disagreeing. He's like, yeah, I agree with it. Like, like so I feel like sometimes when you can kind of get down to like the meaning behind of whatever it is, even if you're kind of like not able to agree on the definition of whatever word, but you're like expressing this is my value. Um, even on Twitter, I've been able to get people to be like, oh yeah, like, no, I, I agree with this thing here. I'm like, good. Like that, that's the important part. And they, if you back up to the bigger philosophical idea rather than like the, the specific thing that they're going to argue on, um, that has usually helped me with like Twitter arguments where, uh, I can like, uh, deescalate <laughs> situations and get them to like, end up agreeing with me. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I guess it helps that like that's a group that already is like-minded like they're not random trolls online like because then they purposely don't try to even understand or they pretend you said something you didn't if it's not you know yeah well i mean there are people on twitter who aren't necessarily troll i mean there are plenty of trolls and like that those are ones like yeah you're never going to you're not trying to do anything there are other ones who are just angry and they they do believe the things that they're saying and they're they're very defensive and aggressive about it and so those are the ones that like even that like when they're getting attacky that's why like i'm fine if you if you want to you know be mean bad and snarky back and stuff too like that's your thing because i know like alex says that she likes to do that like fine that's totally like totally fine by me i don't care how you do it but if i'm trying to make a point and like and i you know i'm trying to have a a conversation with them um then i i never like attack i never like try like get insulting or anything to that i just try to like be as as um you know as calm and and logical in these things too and not make it personal um and then but you know like i said it depends too like i've gotten snarky i'll just you know make mocking comments or something if i see that like oh this isn't like a real conversation this is just an idiot and yeah but, but mostly i don't even come like if i'm just commenting on someone's post i'm like everyone else is already saying it you, like everyone else knows how stupid this is so i usually just do like laughing emojis <laughs> so yeah i mean well, sometimes if it's somebody, I get, well, now I don't, um, I don't know, someone I've known of that, I don't know, say for like a comedian or someone, like one time I, some, uh, this guy, Vic Berger, he's, <laughs> he edited, he like had all these viral edited videos that were like, uh, debate, clips of like presidential debates, um, that are like really funny and kind of in the style of Tim and Eric because he I think he knows those guys or works with them now but like uh he was talking about Andy No or something and um mm -hmm. Brett Weinstein knowing him or like and he just was like saying something like uh I I think I just I don't know I, I responded like what what is him 
what does him talking or being friends with Eddie No mean? Like, what is what's the big deal? Like, he was acting like that means he's a Nazi, basically. Oh, <laughs> like, okay, yeah. And I was yeah. like, yeah. And I was like, um, okay, so he's he's talking to Andy there. What what's your point? And then he just kept going, ha ha, okay, and putting this like same picture. He kept doing responding like that over and over. I forget who it was a friend and I, we were talking about a mutual friend or something and then i think i think the friend we were talking because he was like saying like oh yeah said something about him liking ben shapiro or whatever and i think at the time I, I hadn't really thought about it and then later on i was like oh he was saying that as like a he likes ben shapiro like he listens to him yeah um and i was like because and I think I was yeah I know I think I was confused at the time that I'm like why did he say it like that and I think and it was the ginger I had to explain though too like oh because he thinks that he's you know white supremacist or whatever and and, and stuff like really and they're just things that like people who who are just are gullible and and susceptible to believing all of the the propaganda and stuff about these big bigger figures though that like i don't think about it and i forget they're like oh yeah no they're, they're gonna hear all these rumors and just blindly believe them yeah and i guess yeah maybe that was back when i was like he can't be this dumb like thinking creative people had have to have like i was I was still being surprised by the fact creative people can be so not like they can't critically think about. Really? You're surprised by that? Well, I was still kind of like in the phase of like, let me just ask him what, like try to get him to even, <laughs> and he just kept sending pictures. Like he was a, he caught someone cheating or something. See, this is him with Andy. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I believe you. I know it's not so... fake. Like, <laughs> Yeah. But Andy just went to Antifa. Maybe, like, they were saying, oh, he riles it up. He f I don't even think they were saying he fakes the violence that they hit, like, they beat him up, but, like, that, that he provokes them. Mm. And I'm like, what, just by showing up? Like, it didn't make sense. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I bet the people who recognize him, they're probably already going to be... Uh, aggressive and, and potentially violent so like probably just him showing up does rile them up but yeah. i don't know i've never seen stuff there like with you know the beginnings of anything happening to him too so like i would can say it's possible that maybe he does do like kind of aggravate them on his end by getting in their faces or like talking about something though like i don't know so that's where i'm like yeah maybe i don't how do you like do you know that for sure is there evidence of this otherwise like and if not then why are you so passionate about it i can say like shrug and say like maybe i don't know but uh, does it matter like in the long run if he didn't start anything physical and and he's the one who got beaten up i mean either way even if he kind of like instigated it in some regard their violence is still wrong yeah so like you can't defend that <laughs> Yeah. Unless he was like swinging a knife around and threatening them, and then like I just like yeah, it doesn't matter whether like if he said anything that riled them up, like you still don't attack people. You're still that then that's initiating the use of force. Yeah, um, yeah, like well, one problem is like when you're just online a lot. Um, I think that is that, a problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, even I will start to be like, everyone's crazy. Everyone's crazy left wing. Like, but then like you, if you kind of test it, sometimes you realize, okay, not, not everyone, not like I went to that debate. I was like, wow, no one, I, I, I was actually sitting there the whole time expecting someone to flip out and like ask them something or just like leave or something and no one did and I was like you know I mean that's kind of why sometimes like when I used to listen to like Tim Pool and he would be like I don't know he kind of has this image oh, well he used to live in New York which is weird because he kind of talks about it like it's um jazz <laughs> like everyone here is yeah. a crazy and I'm like I mean most people are like not probably I mean most people are like I don't know, minorities that work and, you know, there's not, I mean, yeah, the people near me, like the young white people. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's, 
they're crazy, but I mean, even at most open mics, like people really don't, uh, well, people do like, it's funny cause people kind of self censor their own laughs, which, <laughs> which almost made me, that's what, that was one of the, like, I almost quit even doing open mics and stuff. Cause I was like, I mean, while COVID was like really bad, like with the censorship and then I was like, um, already kind of plus I kind of already have like a uh, stage fright and stuff and it's hard to do it mm. anyway yeah stand up is terrifying <laughs> you're going up alone and talking directly to the audience even in improv I'm, I'm probably more okay with it now that I'm not doing it I guess but um but like I, I never liked having to talk to the audience for things. Uh, I like to be up on stage and then I'm just, you know, playing pretend with the other people up here. But like when you have to ask for suggestions and all that, like that was my least favorite part was having to like talk to the people. I can perform or and I can like t mingle with like small groups, but it's, I don't know, like it's kind of, there's like a difference in, in being like among the large crowd. And, but like I said, I, I'm probably, I'm more okay with talking to them if it's like a, a planned presentation, like if I'm kind of more prepared for it, I guess, though. But like I said, I'm probably more OK with it now that I have to do like interviews and all that and just, yeah. Um, but I stand up. I had to do that before I did a class and then had to, to do a performance on it at the end, which I didn't know about until oh. after starting the class. And yeah, that was scary. <laughs> yeah, I guess like... Um... So you don't do uh do you, you don't perform that much now? Like, no, not like at all. Mm -mm. There's no place to really do that. The only thing I've done is kind of like taught some lessons um to like high school students and stuff though, where like you know go in for a class and you know, oh, yeah. play some games and stuff with them. But God, this light is really going out. I keep forgetting to change it. Yeah, I guess uh. Yeah, well, now I guess I'm trying to just, like, kind of go, like, well, this is how I get. Um, and then I was looking up people that also... Some actors, like, and it maybe it's because of Broadway stuff. Like, I look up, like, some actors were, like, I get, like... And I was, like, I've never been that scared. Like, they're, like, I have to vomit before I go up. Mm. I, and I'm, like, is it because they're acting? Like, and I don't know, you know? It's a physiological response. Like, I mean, I... B before perform like pretty much every performance i would get really like my stomach would hurt like i wouldn't vomit but it would be uh, like a bloated feeling and, and just like a tightness and, and stuff too though like and it was just yeah. uh, and dread and i'd just be so scared like right before and i'm standing bef like on the stage before the curtain opens or something and like every performance right then and as soon as it opens or you run out on stage whatever it is then i'm fine but it's yeah. that lead up to like right before that um that always like i don't know it's just an uncontrollable thing but i'm glad it's not really queasy so yeah I guess, well, I, I mean, years ago, maybe I got, yeah, I used to get like, for so, like a, a while leading up to it too. Like now I guess it's not a, like the whole like time <laughs> leading up to it. Um, uh, but then also that plus the like climate of being scared to talk about certain things. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I mean, now I'm kind of like, well, you know what? This is people are really. I just realized people are really affected by other people around them. Like, I mean, I just was at this open mic uh, yesterday where, like, <laughs> uh, it was all comedian. Well, no, there was like maybe a few not comedians, but uh, and they were the best ones there. That's usually how it is. Actually, it's weird, but uh, they everyone got really uptight when this <laughs> lady from Israel or her mom's from lives in Israel talked about that situation. Mm. Um, she just brought up Israel and, and like you heard gasps. And <laughs> <the audience. laughs> I was like, are you kidding? Like, this is a comedy. Like it, it wasn't even like she said, you know, these, these, I don't know, let's bomb these people or something. <laughs> um, well, actually, it was funny because this Indian guy went up later and he was like, I guess maybe he's new. 
and he was doing these like edgy jokes and uh <laughs> he was like kind of joking about shooting up places like uh I got this gut like you know it's hard to get a gun in New Jersey you know and I have to practice to g find a find a gay club in Florida <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, I mean, yeah, I think you have to know your audiences and because um, then some jokes are going to go over well at certain places than others. I had a friend, too, who who like, met in Chicago, but he was like a mutual friend from from Phoenix. Um, but he was it? he was talking about something like where I think he, like, he was going to be because he does stand up and he was going to be doing it at a, wet, a friend's wedding or something. But or, but then he found out that it was like a very Christian wedding. So then he had to oh. like cut back and like change up things, too. But I think it and I don't, maybe he didn't find out until like last minute or something. I forget all the details, but it was just sort of like, yeah, you have to adjust accordingly. And sometimes you don't know what your audience might end up being like. Um, but yeah, I mean, even before. I moved from Chicago. I was already not performing anymore because it was becoming less fun. It was just like, oh, yeah. it was becoming, too, and, I, and that was before I really understood what was happening either though. Like I couldn't like pinpoint it, but it was just sort of like, Oh, like people are really offended and, and it's becoming too like woman power stuff. And it, so then it wasn't being funny anymore. It was just being like activist. And, uh, so I just kind of got bored with it. And, um, yeah, so I like I missed the idea of it generally, uh, and but like I wouldn't want to go back and to Chicago to try and do it because I'm like I still wouldn't like the atmosphere there. Yeah, I like like uh, my I well, I, well I was like funny at my well I tried to my brother sort of asked me to do stand up at his his wedding but uh <laughs> I just kind of made it a regular. Uh, speech like where you sort of roast roast the uh, mm. yeah. But even that was like, cause like then you sit down, <laughs> you you have to sit there like I hope they look, cause I have to sit here for the rest of the. Um. But actually, people were like, "Oh, that was good." I mean, but yeah, looking back, I was like, "Yeah, that wasn't very that wasn't good actually." But uh. I roast sounds great. I'd rather, especially like whoever's going to be toasting at, at the wedding and stuff, best man, maid of honor and things where I'm like, I'd rather it be a roast. I mean, obviously I like that. I like it in, in chat on our streams though, when everyone's just always making fun of us and stuff. Like, I think it's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, well, yeah. The ones you, you know, the people you like anyway, because I was at a wedding where <laughs> Where it was like uh, the roast went a little too long, you know, mm. it was too rude. It became rude. Actually. Oh, yeah. Because there's a point where like, yeah, this is funny. Like yeah. oh, now it's becoming mean because it's <laughs> yeah. going on for too Everyone, long. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, like Alex and I kind of talked about that last week or something, too, where um I'm fine with, you know, we're okay with like the teasing and stuff, but then, you know, if everyone were always like putting us down and like in, in, in our lives or in certain places, like, yeah, that would be too much. Like that would bring us down. But when it's like the intention isn't to like actually, you know, um, yeah, actually put us like beat us down with it. Um, then and that's okay. But like, even if it were still like, Oh, it's all in good fun, but everyone is still doing it. Like if everyone were constantly mean in chat or something though, yeah. like, okay, well, this isn't fun anymore. But, um, but then when it can be like sprinkled in with like, here's like real conversation or here's just funny jokes of other things though, too, then, um, then that's okay. But yeah, like no one wants to hear it constantly. So I can see where a roast that just kind of like continues on for too long on like one or two people or something might be considered a little too far. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and it, it, would, it sort of <laughs> became, a, a, you know, a list of th things that were like annoying about a certain person. And then it was like, all right. Oh, yeah. It becomes like too personal or. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you want to keep them lighthearted and <laughs> friendly, you know, and especially like not too many inside jokes or anything too. That so. yeah, <laughs> if you have a whole group. So you never did you get 
uh, at some point did you get like used to doing improv where you were like, all right, like I'm not scared, like nervous. Really? Oh yeah. I mean, it very, there were certain, maybe it was later on toward the, the second half or maybe it, maybe it was just on and off. There were just certain times where like, I don't know, like I'm now I'm certain shows that kind of felt like more pressure on it that made me nervous than other ones. Cause there were some where I'm like, this didn't matter. Like, here's just like, we're feeling like we're one of the many groups that were just doing this at the small, um, the, uh, improv play. I can't even think theater, theater. Couldn't think of the word theater. <laughs> um, and, uh, so yeah and you have like five minutes to do something so then like yeah all right we'll come out and do this thing for a minute and then and you just kind of especially getting in the mindset like that they they teach you to in the classes where like when you know early improvisers even to intermediate like your um your scenes are going to be 20 percent good and 80 percent bad that is just how improv is and then like the most experienced ones the experts it's going to be 80% good and 20% bad because it's still improv. Like, and you never know what's going to happen. Some scenes are just going to fall short. You're just not going to hit right with the audience or click with the other people and on stage and stuff. So like, it's still never going to be a hundred percent great um, because you're making it up. But um, yeah, there, there are plenty of times where I just kind of like, ah, I don't care. Like, and going in with the or mindset of like, yeah, this might not always work. And I'm just like going on to have fun and playing around like that made it a lot easier too. because then I'm just like, when I'm playing pretend, then I'm just imagining whatever stuff going on. And then I usually, and maybe the more experience helped too, because I'm like, I get a lot of laughs. <laughs> so I'm like, so then I'm yeah. not as concerned, though. I'm like, yeah, I've been able to get audiences to laugh at the things I say. So I feel more confident now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's also weird because I don't uh, like public speaking in any way. Like I'm not a, like my friend's a teacher and that that's something I never wanted to like, even that would be too much like for me. So I guess maybe you get used to because it like definitely takes a certain time. personality yeah type to do that that i think like and or at least the, oh, the personality type to do well at it because like having that high energy and enthusiasm and passion for whatever like that that i was just talking about that to a dad of a middle school student yesterday at this thing i was covering and and i was talking about my aunt um and so she was an english teacher and he and he asked her name and he's like oh yeah i had her and he said that she was the only one like the only teacher like the only class that he probably uh, had that he didn't get in a fight in <laughs> that he was like more well behaved because and he said that he really liked her that it was something about like her having a good energy and um oh. and just that like he so he enjoyed it more and so they think that and that was fun and he said he graduated in 1997 too so like that was a while back and he remembers her and remembers liking her so yeah i mean you just need a guy like this because <laughs> you just make it mellow and chill yeah and you'd like yeah. throw mellow the book out or something oh yeah well my eighth grade and not mellow and chill but he did that he eighth grade history <laughs> teacher he threw the book at the wall actually i remember oh, that and he just like chucked it he, he was high energy he chucked it the phone rang he ran to the back of the class and slid over his desk to answer the phone and <laughs> i still didn't do super well in that class because i hated history but he, he, i did like his enthusiasm but he also i remember this and this is when i was 13 in eighth grade and i still remember this that he um corrected a paper that I had and that I spelled crept C R E P T and he put a K over it. And I was like, no, it's spelled with a C it's the past tense <laughs> of creep. And he was like, ah, oh. but there were a couple of different teachers. So, I mean, early on, I kind of knew but once I start and he had like an, he taught some lesson from an email he got that was wrong too. And I talked to my dad about, it and it was just all of these are true except one thing, but it was actually all of them are false except one. Oh. And, and so at, at any point like even if they're high energy if there's a mo like a point where i'm like you're I don't, I don't trust you now like your information that you're giving me i'm not going to do well in that class um but there it's usually though like your passion your energy like my 10th grade history teacher i'm still in love with him but he he was new and he was uh, such a was dork fired for that <laughs> no i wish <laughs> he did end up because he um, ended up being the boss of my best friend at, at, in a place that they used to work and um, and his wife 
and they, they got divorced. They were together since they were 16. But then he did get remarried to someone who was like two years younger than my friend and me, though. So there's a and he was 10 years older than us. So there's a 12 year difference. But it was weird. I'm like, if you were willing to like, heck, <laughs> I was 15 at the time. But <laughs> so this is years down the road, though, right? Not. Yeah, yeah, this was just a few years ago that this happened. Um, so she was she was like 28 or whatever. So um, 26 something. But uh, yeah. But anyway, he and I still remember him as one of my favorite teachers. Like I hated history classes. He was the only uh, even after that, too, like because my 11th grade teacher, he was um, ter- I thought he was an idiot. So I did terribly in his class. And he also had to like quit on his own because he was was found out to be doing some stuff mm-hmm. with the lead because he was the hot teacher and the students really liked him and he liked them too apparently so he ended up leaving but i already i'm like That's no weird. i like my dorky teacher better he's adorable <laughs> yeah i mean uh yeah well my friend says like the kids are good for him and no one else like the other teachers don't like oh that they don't behave well for them yeah he like will call students out and make them feel dumb if they try to be if they're rude and like well also like yeah i don't i don't remember i mean i i i I like the teachers that i thought were um either smart or like oh, this guy's funny or something or like... <laughs> and when if you're funny, then they're likely to be some amount of smart too, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, my friend's school... Well, one of his... I don't know if it's one his one now, but another one of his teachers is not a teacher anymore because of some situation mm-hmm. with a student nothing happened he just tried he wanted something to happen <laughs> um and he was not a hot teacher from the pick i saw definitely not one of the <laughs> oh um yeah but that's another like my uh my friend when he started was still young probably like 21 or something and uh he did have some girl or some girls he was told some girls like him and he was like I don't know. And it sucked because he was like, you know, I mean, I think when you're that age and you're uh, in decent shape or at any point, like, what do you do when people like I would be nervous just that like, oh, I, I, if girls are like you. Just that alone, because then you can be like, oh, what if a girl like is psycho and it's like going to make up something? Well, that happens to everyone now. I mean, like that's the potential <laughs> oh, for yeah. anything at any point. It's more, but it's underage. scarier when they're underage. Yeah, yeah, but that's still always a concern too. But yeah, I mean, you, you never know. Um, so it's a tough boat to be in. But um, but it's but it's also, and I also think it's a societal thing, and it might not be great to get into that because this is a thing that Alex and I have kind of touched on, but maybe we haven't gotten like too deeply into it but it, it, i think people uh, should understand that humans once they reach a certain age and teeny like you know like being a teenager though like they're going to start having sexual thoughts and stuff and um and even though there is still like a big difference in in brain like even a 21 year old isn't fully developed in the brain either so like ultimately it's not far-fetched for like emotions to happen in either direction so it's, i'm not like super i'm not like disgusted by that when ever especially when everyone is uh later uh, post pubescence um yeah. just because like a, you know especially like 16 and total like 16 to 21 like i know a lot of people might be like oh my god but like i it, there are plenty of sexually active people and 16 is in a lot of states and stuff too where it's um like that is the age of consent like you can consent to that it, but and it depends on and even before that it's like i think it's 15 and four or more years older statutory rape in pa maybe it's 16 somewhere 15 or 16 but like i think 16 is the age of consent though where you can sleep with anyone and then it's oh. just dependent on permissions and stuff too and um you've studied these through like 
I remember learning about it in high school. They did teach us this yeah. at one point. And then more recently, I did read about it because I was curious about what, what the, mm. where the law lies. And it varies by state, though. But, oh, and you and you do go to schools for news stories, right? So. <laughs> and I do cover, cover them, or you know. Or did they say, oh, you can't, you have to be a certain amount away from them now? No, they don't. I've actually been surprised. And I do have clearances, though, too, for... Why did yeah. I get them for other things? So, but I did get clearances for something. Um, oh, I think maybe it was to do the to volunteer to do improv there, but then they ended yeah. up not needing them, or maybe I emailed them. I don't know. Whatever it was, they seemed to care a lot because I already knew them too. That like I know the super superintendent to my principal, and like I already know the whole community, yeah. so it was pretty easy. <laughs> I can get away with anything. <laughs> um, but no, yeah. So I go, I cover news there, but even with it improv stuff i don't know teacher wise i remember my my aunt she's retired but she it was filling she was subbing so she had asked me to come one day to, to her classes to to do some improv and i remember her saying how she was like long-term subbing she was saying like some of the kids in certain classes like they might give you a rough time though they're gonna be you know they don't behave well and stuff and i just remember being really excited about it afterward because they weren't a problem like that they had fun like they got into it and started playing granted something there because she's like they you know they think they're in a gang they think they're like thugs and stuff too <laughs> but they got to play pretend of then. So we just let them like, yeah, you're in a game. Like they were trying to like mug something. They had a gun uh-huh. or they're trying to do that. And they stole a car or something, I think is what happened. And so they're trying to drive it, but like it was all goofy stuff. So we let that happen and they had a good time. Like they were involved in it though. And like no one, there were no problems. There was just one kid who just didn't really want to participate. So he sat in the back and then, and just like, he didn't talk at all. Like when I was t- trying to ask him stuff and, and he just kind of shrugged and sat there and he lost participation points, but everyone else was, was great. Um, I think, were they all ninth graders? And then another day I went in with the seniors and I can't, I don't remember which class it was. Um, I just remember like one student, he like I each class I had them, like we did warm ups and then I have them like what we do in improv too is that you go around the room and you pat their back and then you say, I got your back. Um, Cause it's just a way of like, we're supporting each other. The big part is improv is that you're teammates and you're supporting each other on stage, no matter what you've got your, their back. Um, well, you should and then, do that more for the POC in the group. <laughs> yeah. And they, and I had to keep telling them all though, too. It was like, you have to do it gently, carefully. So because they would all just like start, sl- the boys would slap each other in the back and stuff too. And like, you're getting too out. But there was one kid, he like, people were on, you know, they're shy and, and whatever as they're trying to perform. Um, and, and the one kid, like he, he was like teasingly, like trying to not, not doing it like really mean spiritedly, but he was like booing at them. And I walked over to him and I was just like, Hey, like, remember how you said that I got your back? Like we're supposed to be supporting them. And immediately he flipped a switch and just started cheering them on though. So it was just like, yeah, like the, the point is that we're supposed to be supporting each other and not and trying to like make fun of them. So, um, it was nice to see them all like want to participate and and uh, most of them like as well as they can too and and be supportive and i think that's why i love improv too because it's just like teaches good like teaches you to the give and take of and listening and and it's too bad i you know i only got like 40 minutes to do that each time so i couldn't actually get deeply involved to like tell them all those things but but generally if you're really trying to do it it's all about like active listening and um you know, you're responding to the thing that the other person said, you're um, working together as a team. And if someone else like messes up, like you're there to help support them. And um, I don't know. I just love improv. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, maybe get back into it or, you know. Yeah. I, w- I mean, it's mostly as like teachers that like doing that. And then I volu- I started one thing and I just haven't had the time to get back into it. I was trying to get them as an after school program, essentially to um, do more like improv theater stuff because they don't really have a drama club anymore at the high school that I that I used to run when I was in high oh. school. So my aunt was the teacher of it. And then I like, you know, wrote and directed plays and stuff in it and just made me so sad to see that like they're not really doing as much at all or anything at all. But I also don't want to be a teacher to have to run the clubs. <laughs> yeah. So you like, do you think of yourself as a journalist? Journal- um, no. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm fine to like loosely say that. It depends on how people define journalist, I guess. I just oh. call myself a reporter. But even like on the newspaper, the way it write, uh, you know, it has my name, and then underneath it, they'll say like hometown columnist or managing editor. Mine is just staff writer. So I sometimes you just call it a writer. I know, like when I worked at the newspaper, you know, like nine years ago or whatever, my coworker he. I think he mostly called himself a writer rather than report, like, reporter. But to me, I just, I think of reporter as the oh, yeah. main term. But, and I don't know, I, so depending on how you see journalism, but I guess I kind of feel like, like it's all under the journalism field, but I would say journalism maybe seems more like, I don't know, like more research into a subject or something. Like, I don't know, I'm not sure. As if you equate it to just reporter, then sure, like, call me a journalist. But I'm not like hard hitting journalism and going in and, and figuring out like you know, secret secrets and stuff oh, too. Yeah. Like I, I just don't care about that. I like to do more optimistic and um, supporting the community. And maybe it's just the improv side of me where I'm like, no, I want to help build up the community and say like, here are the things, like the good things that are going on, or even if there are some bad things, like put it in a way to say like, hey, can we? address this as a community to help out whatever this like, issue is and um yeah like but I, so i just don't really i don't like anything that's just like, the super negative type of stuff and you get enough of that on facebook of people complaining and and then they want the like yeah i want you to write the story about complaining about this thing here like no i don't like you can send in a letter to the editor if you really want to complain about it but i'm not gonna have, waste my time yeah so well yeah, well, I wonder if something you reported on would ever get big, like, um, and it would probably be if you had some kind of culture war type thing come up in a town. Like, my my friend was, like, there's a school near him that uh, had, like, a has a trans tennis coach that was in the news. Like, it kind of got picked up. And, like, he... Like if he was at that, it's like a thing where if you're on, like I don't know, would you? <laughs> is that something you'd be like, oh, this is awesome? If you like, if would you report on that t type of stuff? Like somebody of just being of a trans person and no, doing, like, or if they, I don't know, reporting on something like. uh because the trans tennis coach was like, you know, changing around the girls and all this stuff, and parents are out. Would you, would you, do you oh, report stuff like that? Like, power, if it, parents are outraged about. Yeah, I mean, I guess I would potentially do that. Luckily, there hasn't been anything quite like that lately. But like, if it were, and like, here's here's the concerning thing going on, and enough people were like reaching out sometimes i don't even know about like I, there have been things there's like something with bullying in the middle school and someone reached out to me and, and i was like well and they said like other parents would be willing to talk about it because she wasn't directly involved and i said like yeah if you want to have them reach out to me then i can talk to to people but like without having anyone really telling me like giving me their side though i can't really it would just be one-sided if i did talk to the school or something but then no one ever reached out to me so that one kind of oh. like had to fall through and and i'm not I, I don't know so there's certain things that i'm like i'll write about it but i'm also not interested like i don't want to have to go digging for it too on on that side because i'm like well if it really matters to people in the community like they can kind of open like that one woman did and i like so i don't know i felt like i gave enough like energy into that though and like if no one else was cared enough then i guess that's the thing like um I think things can happen if it, if people care about something, they can start making it happen, and then that will become news. But if not, if there aren't people who actually care about it, like, well, then why would I bother doing this if it's not important? I was concerned because there they have the whole split of the. I think I've talked about this on my streams of the churches. Um, they're doing the global uh, was it oh, Methodist yeah. church. And so there, some are becoming more modern. The other ones want to go back to tr traditionalism, and that's uh, of the whole um, homosexuality thing is the I think the main one, and and then because it's you know there's a few different churches here, and then my old managing editor had said like oh this, this would be like news that we can report something on this, and I was like 
this is such a bad idea because when I was, I had interviewed like retiring preachers and, and, and incoming ones and then, and ever and different things. And everyone I talked to who kind of like mentioned it, they always like skirted around. No one ever like directly talked about like, cause it was yeah. like, here are the changes, but like, you know, we're, we're trying to do this and we really want to build it. Like, but we're still a welcoming community. Everyone's still welcome. So they're always like, tr- like never directly saying we hate gays or, or whatever it was that they're doing it was always still trying and i'm like this even they aren't trying to like make this like a huge deal out of it this is already going to be very um uh, uh you know like, uh, controversial and stuff like and so like they're gonna have people who are very upset by them like being anti-gay or people like, who are going to be really supportive of it and i just feel like like that was going to be a very awkward story to because people are going to be opinionated on it and they're already trying not to like you know be too loud about this anyway um and i was really glad that it just kind of faded away and it was never brought up again after i was like oh yeah i kind of look into and then it was just sort of fell through the cracks and i did not ever (laughs) say anything about it because i'm like no i just think it was a bad idea and i don't think people like they are people who already know about it like will know like like we don't need to like put a spotlight on it yeah, I mean it's weird because like the pope the pope will like speak on that randomly every couple of years. He's like uh gay marriage is eh, I don't know, but maybe one I don't know. He's just, it's never like he's never that hard. Well, sometimes a couple of years ago he was like, "Yeah, we still don't recognize gay marriage, but civil unions are okay." And then like recently he was like considering gay unions or something. Mm, yeah yeah so, but yeah whatever it's a cultural saying. thing yeah like oh, yeah. whatever is going to be best culturally like i don't and i just don't i don't care what other people do and then like it and, and if you want to i don't know like and i've said this we've been talking about good omens and stuff on our streams but like just generally with religion i if there are things like i don't agree with this thing i'm like this is what god is supposed to be saying in whatever religion you want like but this is the rule here that he's saying that is like that you should do or shouldn't do if i disagree with it and i say like i don't understand why this should be a sin like if it if it contradicts the like the um you're not harming anyone else we're consenting adults we can do it like and i don't see how this is a, like should be considered a sin why would i want to um worship someone who has these as rules like i would feel that way i've always thought that way i'm like at the rules that we have at like a school or a job or something like if this seems arbitrary and and useless why do we need to bother following it so then i lose respect for someone like why are you enforcing a stupid rule that you don't need to so i feel that way like with any sort of like authoritarian quote unquote power um but I yeah so I just like if that's the to me I'm like well if I believe like I want to be in a gay marriage with someone um, but the religion that I claim to want to be in doesn't agree with that like why would I want to be in with that too like Alex and I talk about that with just relationships with people where you're like someone wants to break up with you and you don't want you want them to stay you want to do that like well why why would you want to be with someone who doesn't want to be with you I would want to date someone who actually likes me and wants to be with me um so it's that same kind of thing too where you feel like well I don't really feel welcome if this is what I want why would I want to follow this religion and there are other ones out there so you join a different one I get that that can be tough when you're like, but this is the community I grew up in. Like, I, I want to change, but you can't change other people. You can try, you can throw it out there. You can kind of try to to do that, but you can't force them, I guess I should say, to change. Yeah, well, you know what? I was just thinking, <laughs> maybe if you believe in the, the, uh, the secret or the uh, manifesting, I wonder if they ever, like I would want to ask one of them, can you manifest changing someone's mind, <laughs> like making someone think a certain thing? <laughs> I mean, that is like a weird, like, you know, like, I mean, it's kind of true. Like, yeah, you, you picture what you want to do. So it's sort of like manif, like, you know, working towards something is sort of manifest, but they, but the way they make it sound like, oh, you just like write it down. You visualize having a mansion and you, and that's it. And somehow i'm like i don't know i mean i don't know if that's a power that's just like you have the goal in mind you know who says that 
Um, you know, this the whole uh it was called the secret. It was like Oprah was into it years oh, ago. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's very much oh, I can't even think of what the term is now, but of um Law of Attraction too, it's called, I think. Yeah, there's another phrase that's used that but it, but it's it's you know I don't know, like it's not like just willing it, but like, but, um, but believing in it, like, like if you just believe that, like, you can do this, um, I wouldn't say something, but like, believe that you can do it, like, then, then at least you're, you're going to be moving toward that goal and, and, you know, when you're open minded to the idea that this is possible, because if you're close minded to it and say, like, no, I can never do that, like, yeah, you're never going to, then, like, when they say, like, not with that ad, dude, like, it's true that, like, you're unlikely to accomplish the thing that you want if you think that you can't do it, but being open minded to it. So it's nothing supernatural about it, but I'd say that, like, psychologically that gives you the, the i mean i guess it's similar to when i was asking alex about what she thought of the negative energy that people like that you think that does that draw more negativity to you the more n- negative you are and miserable and stuff because it's because i'm like well like in, in a sort of woo woo way like that would be like is that just gonna or and in a realistic way, you're just going to recognize the negative um, things that happen to you more than other people might. You're going to dwell on them more. And um, when opportunities arise, you might just re- like the way that you react to something like that, that maybe you're given less opportunities because you're negative and that you think that like these things are going to happen. And um, and just the attitude that you have like during it, like that you're going to be the one who gets left out. And, and it's a thing, too, that I had growing up where I, I was more... <laughs> uh you know miserable and angsty and, and stuff too and like and, and felt unseen and unheard in a lot of ways um and then i feel like very differently now but i feel more that's not okay <laughs> just want to say that which part feeling more uh, uh, oh yeah 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 it was a poc especially um but like just i i mean the it was like being super insecure and i still am in a lot of ways but like at least the you know coming off as more confident helps you make you more confident i used to hate going to the grocery store it was just like make me really uncomfortable and it's too crowded and too many people and now i'm a lot more okay with it which is good because the ginger hates it um and and sometimes i'll go in with headphones and just jam out and dance down the aisles and stuff or um but regardless like i would rush through the checkout line, you know, the self checkout and hurrying and whatever. And now I'm like, I'm taking my time though. Like there are plenty of other ones. If it's busy, like I, the mentality I have is I'm allowed to exist here. Like I'm all, I'm also allowed to be purchasing stuff and being here in this moment and I'm not less important than the person who's waiting behind me. So having that mindset, and I don't even know what made me start having it. It really helped me of just kind of like, Oh, like I'm not taking up space that like where i shouldn't be like i i am allowed to take up space in this world and that just kind of and it wasn't like this big dramatic thing it was just sort of like a tiny shift where i'm like yeah okay and that made it a lot easier for me to like yeah i'm fine with going to the grocery store i'm not rushing through it i might spend like i I walk through the aisles and buy more sugary stuff than i should but um it's just it makes it a lot less stressful going in with a better attitude. Um, and, and just generally like meeting up with people, like talking at work, the one worker that I had to, cause she was just saying that like, you know, like people are already like, they, you know, like they like to talk to you, like you're already part of the community and then it's blah, blah, blah. And, um, and it's just so funny to hear that from other people saying that like, you know, you're outgoing and social. And I'm like, I, wasn't back in the day so and i still kind of feel like i'm that person too that i'm like no like I, I, how, why do you think that i'm so much more outgoing like that just doesn't feel like me even though i am willing to chat with people and stuff so i don't know i'm not sure when maybe improv and maybe uh i don't know other other th- life i guess the older you get the less you care sometimes too so i'm just more it's easier to get a little bit more confident about that yeah yeah i mean it was mostly uh going to college for me that i mean I, yeah i was probably i was like that but worse like growing up and uh and uh even over covid i almost started to go back to that because i wasn't doing anything you know because a lot of mm-hmm. then and then i stopped doing comedy and that was like what i was kind of doing to be social before 
uh, everything. So, and then like, yeah, I guess, it, and then you get used to being feeling down, and then that's kind of what it is. You just like don't realize. Oh yeah, you get in that rut, and then yeah. and, and it can be hard, especially when you don't notice it, like because it's just like a subtle slide into it, and then you're there, and then it's hard to get out, and yeah. Yeah, and then you're, you know, like, uh, you know, like just in a back alley with a strange man and doing whatever to get. Every Friday night, that's where I. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I don't know, like, I, mine was, it was bad before, like, it was very bad that I. Just kidding, by the way, I don't know. If, <laughs> what if I'm not. We listen to every. Friday night, <laughs> back alley. I used to write in like I think I still have that as my Twitter profile too. Whenever I made that in like two thousand nine or whatever, um, that it's my my location is back alley refrigerator box. I think is what I put <laughs> oh, next to the homeless guy with the peg leg. I think with the eye patch and the homeless guy with the eye patch and the peg leg. I think is what the full thing was that I used to like write on places. Was my address. Wow. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just think it is funny to see like, and the more confident that you act, like act, like I said, then, then the more you feel like I, you, and I, I still thought I felt this way with like, oh, I can go out and hang out and socialize with people, but then I need to recharge. Like, then I'm like, I'm exhausted by it and it's so tiring and I don't want to talk to anyone for like another two weeks. Um, and I don't feel that way now and and maybe just doing the reporter thing again or at least that's given me the opportunity to feel that way where I'm like oh no I'm fine with it like I still am lazy and sometimes I just don't want to go put on pants and have to go places but it's not like ex as exhausting as it had been and maybe streaming helps too when Alex and I are just talking for like four hours twice a week so it's just sort of like yeah I'm used to like chit chatting with people now but um, I still am not great in like party situations like i'm not i'm not good at like i don't like talking like i don't i hate shout i don't like talking over people like if there are a lot of people oh, talking yeah. i'm not good at that I like one-on-one -on -one conversation or like you know very small group settings but if it's too much i will back down and not really speak up much if other people are too chatty because i hate having to try to like get in there and that's an improv thing too where they're they try to teach you give and take and especially in group scenes, you have to be really careful. And the goal is that like each person says a line first before you like say the next one you're trying to ensure and people are terrible at it. There so many are bad. So they have a, a role that they that you some default into, but that they named is the sniper. So it's that you don't say that much, but when you do say a line, it's a funny line, it's a laugh oh, line. Yeah. And people so I would end up being that part because like I wouldn't speak up much. I'm like, well, when I do, I have to make this count. And so I was good at being a sniper at that. I think the ginger was too. Um, but and that was more fun though too, because I'm like, yeah, like because they're blabbing on and stuff. And then like, but like they're gonna remember me because I made them laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um that's like the maybe that's a trope or something because there's a there is some characters like that too. Even uh, Jane Silent Bob, Silent Bob would rarely speak, but then he would mm -hmm. be like all brilliant. <laughs> he would be like, you know, um, yeah, but uh, I didn't know he spoke at all. <laughs> I never really yeah, watched it. Was like, them. What, um, yeah, it would just be a thing where they, they save it for like only some, like once in a while, and then it would be like some super smart thing or something oh i do that i mean not in the super smart way but um with the one D, D game that the ginger runs when i'm not running my campaign um and i play the cat witch and i'm just a, I'm a black cat that has like a purple witch hat and cape and but i so i i didn't talk the first session that we did i didn't talk at all and then i said like one thing at the end and they're like you can talk <laughs> and so each session i only say one thing and then that's where um the ginger usually just ends it on to like if i say something i'm like that's the end of the session so now i'm trying to like time it out and like think like what is she going to say now but um but it's always funny to for them and in the way i play it that that i'm like kind of creepy and i don't really say much but like but just the silence and and like the powers that she has so everyone else keeps kind of playing and they're like you think that she was just like 
murdering there's like a kid like a we shrunk down and i forget what it was but it, like tiny people and the elder queen or something died she was already like sick and old but they were they're just telling each other like i think she killed her i think so. she killed and so then at the end the line that i said was like i may have killed the queen and um, before you could even like finish it the other guy was like yeah we know <laughs> so it's just so funny that they like Again, it's improv too, where they're like building up, like, oh, I wasn't really seeing my character being that way, but because they keep saying how like creepy and I think she's more powerful than then like and I think she's just like they keep saying that she's in charge and the leader, even though she doesn't like she just kinda hangs out and does cat stuff sometimes. <laughs> All the time she's just like licking her paw or sniffing a wall i mean yeah that's a great identity for you in real life that you should yeah that i'm just i am a cat witch i identify <laughs> as a cat witch and i would like you to treat me as such did you ever see anyone uh <laughs> i don't know if this is a common woke saying or not but like there was <clears throat> somebody in my siblings or somebody knows of that like just said on facebook or something was like i'm gonna like i'm gonna start saying they them pronouns or something and then someone was like i love this for you that they were gonna start <laughs> saying they them or start using was, them yeah using i guess oh okay and like the the way they said i love this for you like what like it was so weird like oh good like now that's like like i don't know it's such a weird saying the thing for you like, part where, yeah because like even when even it's usually not done that way but like you could even see it as the good for you because like that's good for you yeah. not for me like i wouldn't want that to happen to me though but yeah um so it's just kind of adding that in there of uh it kind of reminds me of a dimitri martin joke that he did where he said something about how like you know, saying I'm sorry versus I apologize. Like, and you go up to someone at a funeral and, you know, say, I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry for your loss. And you say, I apologize. And that kind of has like a different connotation to it, too. Like, did you kill the person? Or, um, but just certain things were like, yeah, like I'm, I'm sorry you feel this way. Like, you're not sorry that of the thing that yeah. you did. You're just sorry to the, per like, the person feels that was, you know, sometimes I do that because I'm like, I'm not sorry for what, like, I'm not wrong here. You're just, feeling extra right now yeah yeah well it was all i mean he this guy also was like heavier set which is like it's it's kind of i mean oh yeah well i mean if you were a woman yeah well he was a guy which is i think he i think people kind of do that because they're like i'll try this out I'll try to they them thing out. Now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's then, such oh, a for fad. Oh, this is good. And an identity issue. And yeah. well, yeah, similar to the stunning and brave thing for women, where they're like, where they like, yeah. oh, you're wearing this bikini. That's so stunning and brave. Why is that brave of me to do that? It's only yeah. brave if it's something that like is a courageous thing. That like, oh wow, like why would you dare to do something like that? That because it's like either scary or embarrassing or like what is the thing that makes this a brave thing to do? It's because you don't actually think that this is stunning and beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's shocking and brave. That's <laughs> yeah, that's so horrifying and brave. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, I think, well, I think I was working, I said a bit about, well, once at a mic or something about how, but I think that somebody's had to say this before about, yeah, like they say that about Lizzo, like, oh, that's so, br like, uh, yeah, that's so brave. Why is that brave for? Oh, and then yeah, the joke, too, of people that. saying that, like, oh, you're beautiful. You look just like Lizzo. And then all the women, yeah. like, get mad about that, though. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, like oh why don't you want to look like her if if she's supposed to be beautiful if obese is supposed to be beautiful and and she does have a pretty face though at least with the yeah. makeup on um i don't know what she really looks like but yeah i i don't know there's just certain that like certain things that you don't always want to see i'm so like someone can do anything they want it just doesn't mean that everyone has to like it or like looking yeah. at it and i don't know like That's i think alex and i have said before too though she and i would neither of us would ever wear bikinis either so well lizzo probably has in photo shoots yeah I mean, yeah she's been nude in photo and it's like no oh, see never do that well that's another thing that started with lena dunham maybe where it was like you have to see lena dunham naked like we are gonna make you see that 
Like, wow. she her show, she was always naked in. Oh. Uh, a magazine cut, like, everything possible. They put forgetting her... who she is. I had to look her up. I mean, well, Sam Smith is, like, the new one. That's what I said on my podcast. He's the new, Lena, like, a male Lena Dunham because he gained weight. He's, and he's, and then now he's trying to be new. <laughs> Is Lena Dunham, was she overweight before and now she's lost weight or was she, is she, she now? She fluctuates. I mean, she okay. never was like Lizzo. She just was like, nor maybe she started as normal weight, like slightly. Uh, over what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> normal. I mean, not, uh, maybe not even normal, like slightly curvy, but not, but it wasn't even like a, like she just had uh. no, nothing attractive going on. Like there was nothing. Like, I'm, I'm always, it's one of those, you rarely see someone where you're like, yeah, nothing about them. <laughs> it's like attractive, like not even to me. Well, I don't know if it's mean because she puts it out there so much. So of when she's nude and you're seeing it or. Well, yeah, she, it's always just showing her body off and there's nothing to. <laughs> Am I on safe search moderate? I'm not seeing any nude photos of her. Yep, it is moderate. Maybe I'm just thinking of her show. They always, there was, I don't know, I thought I heard people always making jokes about her being nude all the time. On. I was just curious if it would show up. And, oh, there she is in a bikini. See, yeah, I'm not super interested yeah. in looking at that. Also, I'm just not super interested in a bunch of tattoos. I don't really like looking oh, at. I didn't even know she had. The, yeah, she's got them all over. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I mean, her, well, Sam Smith is, like, the new, like, look, I'm, well, he used to be in shape and stuff, and then and now he's. What he looks like. He just gained weight, and he's, like, just. Oh, know. he's the one with the weird black out, the shiny black yeah. shoulder pad pants thing. Hmm. Okay. What is it that he's, people are doing what with him? That he's. Stunning and brave too. Ugh. Um, I mean, I would, I would, I would be like, is this a trans? Oh yeah, because he does seem more effeminate. Yeah, like you, it, it looks like he's transitioning into transitioning. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just would assume gay this. guy. Well, it's like, but now that he looks like this, now he's showing off all the time. Oh, okay. I didn't see these in here. Yeah. Oh, uh, see? Yeah. I, oh, <laughs> there's just so many people that I mean, I'm he not looked, interested that, in that's seeing. That's like Lena Dunham. I feel like Lena Dunham would look the Naked. same. Naked. Like the same boobs even. Uh, I, just I, I just, yeah. <laughs> I just, well, I think he's missing some tats though. She has more. Um. Yeah, yeah, he probably has. <laughs> he probably has like a tattoo that's like dirty slut or something now. I think just most people I don't really want to see naked. Yeah, that's that's what just, like the culture is doing now. It's like, which I guess people they're showing naked. On the other hand, like I'm, I mean, I personally I'm just like I don't really want to see it. But I'm also I also don't care if they do because it was a thing where you know Alex and I talked about before of nudity of like if people of getting in trouble of like if you're a nudist or something though too or not but i'm like i i think we over stigmatize the idea of the naked body though like i don't see why it necessarily has to be bad and um and then i get like if you're bringing in kind of like sexual stuff happening then then that's a problem but just the the idea of a naked body shouldn't be an issue look at that's him why the up before, above yeah. though the I know the woman above there was in an image yeah that one there and the one and I think she's in another I can't remember oh she's she's a uh, Karen Captain Karen, she's the captain in I think she's the captain in Psych is she uh, oh Samantha Smith that's why it came up no Mary Winchester is she Mary Winchester yeah. that's it is she also. Is she also the other one? I don't know. Mary Winchester is how I know it. Okay. Yeah, and that's a that's a trans woman. Kim. Wait, the one with the boobs? That this one. She he whatever transitioned like young. Which one? The one that says Bond Girl? I don't The one next the one in the photo with him here. 
with the the blonde one the doing this because i don't see the cursor yeah. isn't showing up for me oh okay yeah that's it <laughs> okay okay so they're doing that that's a trans woman there yeah huh okay it's hard to tell from from this far away but she's got more boobs than i do so well artificial <laughs> uh, yeah he like he, i mean he looks like uh that one actor I don't know Jude actors Law, well enough. Jude Law kind oh, of. okay. I can kind of see that. Yeah. Well, yeah, but but it said uh, he's a they them. So another that's more proof that they gain weight and then they say that. Same thing. Yeah. With Which is that what happened when yeah. when she turned was the weight gain? Yeah, because it makes sense because you get more insecure with yourself and you're like, I don't oh, yeah. feel as feminine or masculine as I'm supposed to feel anymore. So I'm going and and I just, um, so it's just a, a lot of it is insecurity. Um, and, and that's why it's so common in, in teenagers now too, though, because of course they're insecure. Like they're trying to figure out their bodies and stuff and just, and everything about themselves and is still changing and growing and stuff. So then, and I felt that way. I mean, like not thinking, that like, I feel like if I were growing up at this point in time and like trans stuff was pushed around, I might have considered that because like I felt like not feminine enough for so long. Um, so I can understand them feeling that way. Does this look not confident to you? <laughs> I think it well, could it be a say, uh, false confidence. Say... Yeah, like I don't I don't. That's what confuses me. It says loving your like that's why you posted it. But and that's why I think it could be fake too, though. That like yeah. that oh, that you're you're trying to force it and you're flaunting it because you know that like I I feel kind of bad about this, but then no, society is telling me that I should be good, so I'm going to put this out there. And it is kind of a fake it till you make it thing too, potentially. That they like yeah, like I'm I'm going to do this to try and get myself to feel better. But like I would say they probably are at home hating themselves <laughs> because that happens a lot too. Like anytime, um, yeah, yeah. Cause you, that, you see so many unhappy already. people or especially with trans people oh, after mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but i did uh, maybe he did gain it like not on purpose i mean i don't know it's easy to gain weight but lizzo like it seems like it's her image but like he gained it so it's like did he not yeah, maybe it's like he just gained it and then he was like, all right, I'm going to embrace this now, body positive. <laughs> yeah, and it could be that as well. That like, And maybe he gen... It, that's why, like, I, the, what I'm saying here, it might not be true, though, because it's I don't know the person well enough to, to make a hard statement on that. He could just also genuinely, like, not care and, like, yeah, like, no, like, I'm... I am the way I am and I'm beautiful no matter, like, no matter what size I am. Like, maybe he is just genuinely confident. Yeah. But they are confident... <laughs> But because they are doing that, that makes yeah. me question it more so. And people, I mean, especially with, with that type, like there, you see a correlation between those choices and depression. Um, Demi Lovato has, has talked about her depression and other yeah, psychological like issues and stuff. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. So like a disorder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so they're all connected into yeah. like hey here are these choices that i'm making about it. and it's a psychological effect of it that and and it's out of i think just when it comes down to it, it's out of confusion on who you are as a person um for any number of reasons and then but that is just a um a reaction to a deeper problem that that people have and but they just think that like no this is the solution to it and you're just kind of targeting a, like a symptom here that you think it's going to go away and that's why they'll say like oh so many like trans suicides are out there and like we need to help them out because we're not supportive enough like no the issue is they already have some sort of deeper seated issue they're too like trans is just the way that's coming out there's a deeper thing that needs to be addressed and that's not being addressed because instead you're just like trying to to prop up this thing here and yet they're still depressed and upset and stuff inside so that's why it's a problem it's it's not the change of of it on its own it's that you're you're acting as if everything is okay by this one change here and that like there's almost always more to it because it's such a yeah. small percentage of people who actually have gender dysphoria well i guess 
um, I guess I'll close on that bigotry. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I'm so bigoted. I have trans friends, though, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, oh, yeah, thanks for coming on, though. Uh, yeah, there was other, I might write down some other stuff if you'd want to come on again sometime because sure. there's some stuff that I was like, okay, that, that would take too long. Like my whole history of drug use and um, <laughs> no, I guess, well, some of the st mental health stuff, but like, uh, then I, like, I always feel like that's uh, only sometimes I talk about that because I, because otherwise I'll feel like a, one of those podcasts that's like, we're getting to the deep core of somebody like uh, Dak Shepard or. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I can like that. I mean, I like, again, talking nuance or getting specific. And I love psychology and the drug stuff, though. I'm not, I, I don't have enough experience really to have anything. But my thing is always just people should be allowed to do what they want on stuff. And as long as you're not hurting other people and it might not be a healthy choice that you're making, but you should be allowed to make it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was, I'm joking. I never really did drugs, but uh, sure. <laughs> I never really did. Uh, I, but I mean, I'm, I'm totally sober. Like just don't ignore what everyone says. Like I'm totally sober. What's everyone saying? Cause no, no just ignore that. Like ignore that. Cause I feel like that's an the... unsolicited, <laughs> if you have to say that other people are saying something and then, and I didn't ignore, even know like what my, um, uh, sponsor yeah and my <laughs> AA. correction officer says like oh yeah, yeah. probation <laughs> officer oh, correction yeah. officer yeah yeah well that's don't believe yeah don't, uh, don't believe what the restraining order says what if somebody like what if i said oh i'm a they them now because and i'm embracing my drug use like what if somebody was like i have a new identity because now I'm just going to be on heroin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Artie Lang did that. And, you know, many other, maybe Hunter Biden was doing that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. It's so, because then you're able to, to just use that as like a shield. Then two people can't say anything again, like, because they just would need to enable, because it's the right thing to do is that you can't yeah, say that. Yeah. I mean, so. actually, you could cover it up. You could be like, well, I mean, Miley Cyrus seems like, like she had a, had or has problems with probably drugs and partying, but they yeah. never talk about her. Like she, she acts like she always used to talk like, I just like, I don't need to sleep. And I don't <laughs> and like all these weird quotes. I'm like, okay, I guess you just act like it's part of you. Like, oh, this is my image. Like, hmm. I didn't know she Smith said that. started doing that. Like who would, I don't know. That would be funny to see. That would be interesting to see if he started to have like, problems if they'd start to say anything i just <laughs> assume most um especially musical celebrities most musical celebrities have a drug problem to some yeah. extent even if it's just alcohol yeah well he's he's paler than most celebrities but <laughs> <laughs> yeah i see i guess it seems that he doesn't really hang out in that um swimsuit often since he oh, is yeah. pale that's the same with me too. Like my torso has like never seen the light of day. So it's pretty pale in comparison to the rest of me. Yeah, mine too, but that's because I was molested. No. <laughs> oh, in the sunlight? Yeah. And now you're just uh, afraid. Your skin's I'm... afraid of the sun. Yeah. I, get, it was, I got sunburn in at the same time. Yeah, but that could be traumatic. Need to buy sunscreen. Yeah. During molestation. Don't use sunscreen. That's what they say. Everyone. That's why I say to use. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they say to use sunscreen because you never know what's gonna happen. Because. <laughs> it's the tagline of like, <laughs> can't even think of brand names of. That would be a sunscreen of like logo on the sun lotion bottle. Yeah. Instead of that girl. On you the never line, know what's like, gonna happen. <laughs> Wink. Oh yeah, I should send you. I have to send you this uh, clip of uh, one of the Friday the 13th I watched where she was like, 
she randomly said retard in one part that was <laughs> really funny because it wasn't even a she was like what if he's a frightened retard or something <laughs> who was this some just some one of the girls in the movie said it about jason oh okay it's just funny that it was just some so just some which she, uh, which friday the 13th movie is it the second one okay okay i don't think i've wait maybe yeah i have didn't we watch i can't remember we watched the first one and then the reboot last year but i oh. think i maybe we watched it's the easy second to miss one. that line probably yeah, and it's been a year ago. I can't remember that far back. That's why I don't remember. That's why I have to rewatch stuff, um, especially when new seasons or something come out. I'm like, I can't remember anything, especially for the good omens I had to do. I just read the book and then also rewatched season one to watch season two so I could know it'd be fresh in my memory. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah, check out beverly's channel um yeah for saying bev the last uh <laughs> oh yeah it's <laughs> all right um and, yeah uh, Rump, where does this air is this on rumble too yeah i'm gonna yeah now i'm gonna start putting more on rumble because i'm sick of uh youtube and yeah join the club rumble uh what is it dot yeah. com slash c slash the dim side is where i stream thursdays and fridays yeah so at uh, night check it out um just a lot of i mean warning there's a lot of end bombs but you know you know i feel like we should say that that's like the one thing that we don't say that i still feel that oh yeah and the the f double g word too there's the n double g yeah. and the f double g that i feel and i think i have said we have talked about it but i feel weird about it I but mean, we are willing really to say like everything saying. else faggot or retard but i don't really i mean i don't really say fag ever anymore yeah that's not something that i, that I just commonly used anyway but we definitely say retarded a lot um yeah, well the only one I, i've like seen this guy nick ricade <laughs> say the n-word on recently that's the only guy i've seen say it even on rumble mm -hmm. um but yeah yeah, see, and I think I should make it more, but I, I don't know. I feel like put it just, as the title, put it in the. Yeah, it's still so <laughs> taboo that I feel like is it still taboo even with like the the lesser, you know, offended oh, people yeah. and stuff. So like I don't know. Um, I want to. Yeah. I do want to normalize it though, but I just it hasn't been something. But we will say, you know, I don't know what you're allowed to say on YouTube though. Wigger. The c word. Uh, we like the sea where we talk about vaginas a lot too in our oh, streams yeah. lately has been <laughs> coming yeah, up I, have a to, lot. I'll, I also have a I, almost, I forgot to bring up but i'll put in the I might send you this one of the the cnn reporter like freaking out because someone said the n-word this was years ago like 2017 2016 hmm. and this guy quoted he's like and he also said something in the n-word or i don't know and then <laughs> he was just referencing what someone had yeah, said he was so. quoting it and he well when i, oh, I saw think it, I it didn't bleep this. it out but now it is but yeah i think i i think oh, i vaguely yeah. remember that <laughs> and she like she kind of she has a freak fake like emotional tries crying almost like <laughs> i don't get being emotionally upset by that yeah she you can just be at least like kind of surprised, like oh, the, you know, the, wasn't expecting it, but yeah, not to cry over it. God, I hate women. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, and this was obviously. I don't know. I felt like she it was. It was the decision. So she went. Ah, okay, you gotta go. You know what? I'm sorry. And she apologized. She was like, "I'm sorry, someone said that word," and then she like almost cries, like. And I'm like, she decided to do that. Like, she just went, I'm going to stop this. And I don't I don't know if she decided to fake cry, but it was almost <laughs> like that. And I was like, I mean, I probably would have said, oh, so you're quote. I might have clarified, like, oh, you're quoting. I, I don't know if he said uh, bright, uh, that Breitbart guy said it or something. Mm. Oh, wait, yeah. he said, like, oh, and he says the N-word a lot. 
<laughs> and he just said it. And the black guy, like, made a face, like, just surprise, really. It's really just, like, more surprise when I hear that now. Yeah, yeah. That's why, like, I don't Well, I just never really get offended by things. And it depends how it's being used, too. Any word, like, if someone is just, like, being aggressive and yelling at someone, like, it doesn't matter what words they're saying. Like, if they're being a dick about it, then, then I'm not going to want to hear it. But it doesn't matter the, the slurs that they might be using. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. Uh, check out her channel for that coming up soon. <laughs> Dicks and vaginas. That's us. Yeah. Um, we are watching Teeth for next th for this upcoming Thursday. Oh, oh cool. Yeah. I I kind of remember that and that uh, Slither movie coming out around the same time. I don't know if it was. Did they come out the same like, time? I think Slither was 2006. I don't remember when Teeth uh, came out. And I have seen Teeth, later, but it's but been years. Yeah. 2007. So they were pretty oh, okay. close. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, all right. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, stay safe. Uh, bring your gun to every interview. I keep forgetting that it's under my, co uh, my car seat, <laughs> so I am. <laughs>